Hey Matt, how do I get my hips lower during a sumo deadlift? So a really common mistake I see is people just artificially setting their hips lower for a sumo deadlift. Your hip height will really be more a product of your external rotation and abduction. Let me demonstrate this. So what influences hip height in a deadlift, either conventional or sumo, is really how much external rotation and abduction you have for a given amount of hip flexion. So if I'm in a conventional position, a given amount of hip flexion, my femur here can only be projected back and forth or up and down. So what that means is this vertical distance is gonna to have to be greater since we're only in two dimensions. If I externally rotate and abduct, I don't change the amount of hip flexion. Now we have three planes. We can go side to side, up and down, back and forth. So what that means is the vertical displacement doesn't need to be as big. Thus, my hips end up lower down. Now the other key point is, the main reason people pull more sumo is actually because most people are more efficient extending their hips when they're in this externally rotated and abducted position. So each person's gonna have an optimal position for them, external rotation and abduction, and your hip height is gonna follow that amount. Seeing your hips down any more lower than that isn't necessarily gonna be better. Okay, so let's say we're in that position. We got the optimal amount of external rotation and abduction for our build. What happens if we sit our hips lower? Well, first off, what's gonna happen with your abduction and external rotation is you're gonna go further into that position, which again, we're already at our optimal, going any further is just gonna hurt us. Or what happens is if we don't have the mobility for it, our knees are gonna collapse a bit. And that's just gonna hurt our overall positioning and efficiency. Even if we are able to maintain that position, what we're essentially gonna do is we're gonna bend over less at the hips and bend more at the knees, which for sumo is not a good thing because hip extension is the vast majority of times not what's gonna limit sumo, especially at the start position. The man's for knee flexion during sumo versus conventional are about 300% higher. In other words, sumo is way more a quad dominant movement, especially off the floor. So we do not want to increase the needs on our quads anymore. This is why oftentimes when you see somebody try to set up with artificially low hips, what ends up happening is when they start pulling, their hips rise and then the bar breaks the floor. The reason being that lower hip position again wasn't efficient, they didn't generate enough force to break the floor until their hips rose up a bit. So I'm attaching a few clips here, this is my friend Jamal, watch how upright he is at the start of his deadlift, yet his hips aren't actually that low, I'd actually say they're pretty high. I think this is where the big misconception comes from. People see these really elite sumo deadlifters and they tend to be more upright. They think lowering their hips to get their torso more upright will solve their problem and make them more efficient, but this isn't necessarily how it's going to work out. Like I said, each person has an optimal amount of external rotation and abduction that will put their hip extensor muscles in the strongest position. For some people, this will be a really upright position. And people whose optimal position leads to them being really upright tend to be better sumo deadlifters. This is because all else being equal, being more upright means your moment arms are going to be shorter and thus easier to overcome. But just trying to recreate these shorter moment arms by being more upright probably isn't going to work for you if it means you're going to put your hip extensors in a less advantageous position. So altogether, rather than artificially trying to lower your hips, try to raise them to the height where the bar breaks the floor naturally, and experiment with the amount of external rotation and abduction to find what's the optimal amount for you.